to my face criticism for that. I, it was, I was called a tinkerer. Why are you not, why are you tinkering with a methodology that really doesn't have any problems? Why are you doing these things? And so I just really thought, even though that study was published in Java, I was like, well, that's, that's really ridiculed. was 1999 and so that's you know, it kind of gives some perspective about how young our field still is and how we still fight some growing pains we've made some progress but we still kind of hear ghosts of the past and um, it kind of reminds me of this cheesy Star Trek quote I saw on my flight up here and it was this new show Star Trek Discovery yeah and it was uh, Sarek who's the father of Spock that says uh, Allowing the emotions to bring up ghosts of the past uh, leave you in suffering that only logic can save you from, or something to the effect yeah. of that. And it's it's almost as if as our field continues to evolve, and evolution, if you think about it, and transformation is not an easy, wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like you think about it in the gym, how do things transform in the gym? You have to force adaptation rep by rep. You know, and it's not pretty. How how does nature produce beauty? Usually through heat and pressure. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's resisted. Nature by its by its design wants to hold homeostasis, and people are no different. And so, I look at this in some ways, and I think about how does our science move forward? How does our profession move forward? And we have to those of us that want to see it truly progress to all it can be, have to. As a, from a value standpoint, remember what we do and why we do it, or else when we do find things that push the status quo, that question the way that things are, we will get pushback. Mm -hmm. We will receive uh, some not so nice comments and, and see some things that are not so nice said about us and, and have some embarrassing things. I've been early in my career embarrassed in front of rooms full of people because I dared to challenge how things were from a certain methodological standpoint. But I've been in the field long enough now to realize that if I'm okay with whoever gets credit and however change happens, as long as the field progresses and moves forward, I want to be a part of that. And that's kind of, I've been here long enough now to where that's where I am. So rather than becoming overly pessimistic, I'm now I'm starting to become more optimistic because I see now a young generation of behavior analysts hungry for more, who understand that the way I was trained was a good foundation, but now I have to build the house of what this profession is on top of that. And so I would, I just really want young behavior analysts, whether they're trying to, you know, get better at providing autism treatment or go into some new area like health and fitness and, and tackling this obesity crisis. There, there's a lot of old contingencies there, some of them monetary, and so they can expect resistance. And to remember, write those values down. Like, why am I doing this? Uh, and I sometimes have to do that for myself. Like, why am I doing this? Do I really, you know, when I had the opportunity, for example, to really uh, engross myself in relational frame theory and then apply it to autism treatment, I, th I thought, Boy, people are going to ask me if I've lost my mind. People who have known me in the field and know my, you know, my pedigree and how I was trained. And whereas in my mind, it makes perfect sense if I think about science progressively. If I look at the data honestly, and then I, you know, test run those data myself, and then I had to remind myself my values as a scientist. That's why I'm doing this, and I'm going to then accept. That as a consequence of those va those values, certain aversive things will happen. And rather than becoming angry or trying to run from them or fight for them, I'm going to actually move toward them. I'm going to be open and willing to accept those things. And when I when I finally got to a point of being able to do that, the field didn't change, the profession didn't change. I changed, yeah. and I started to find more joy in my work again to find more promise and more hope and more people who wanted the same thing. So that's, you know, that's really kind of where I am right now in my career that's kind of been like a roller coaster for the better part of 25 years. And I wouldn't change any part of it.
So I guess if I'm giving, I, I guess I'm old enough now where people ask me for <laughs> advice. And if I was to give an advice to someone brand new in the field is to continue questioning. It's not good enough that something works. Why? That's what we're. That's what's supposed to make us different. Why does something work? We don't want to be lithium behavior analysts. They don't know why lithium works. It just does. That's not good enough for us, or it shouldn't be. Or else, why did we ever move away from behavior modification? Uh, and so, but not to expect that to always be uh, accepted welcomely. You'd think that. Oh, that's a brilliant skeptical question, Ryan. No, they take often, you know, it's, it's, you have true ad hominem attacks and then you have people who take any question of their work as an ad hominem attack when it's really not. Mm -hmm. And so I would tell the young behavior analysts to, to focus on why they're doing what they're doing and prepare and accept that that is the very evidence that what they're doing is likely something that will benefit our field. So. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> I can say, uh, I think I speak for many when I say that like you're, you inspire a lot of people <laughs> and you, you're articulate, you give a shit and uh, know, you're pragmatic man, you listen, it's appreciated. You, you got to, but you know, I, I've, a lot of that came through a lot of suffering, a lot of suffering inflicted upon myself, you know, because I wouldn't accept Criticism. I wouldn't accept, not really even criticism or cynicism. I didn't accept it for what it was and try to understand it. I took it as an affront. It led me down dark paths where I like left the field for a little while. Yeah. You know, I didn't leave behavior analysis. I'm sitting there as a dean of students at a small college. You know, like, hi, why are the why are the dorms not having holes punched in the walls anymore? Behavior analysis. Why is there no litter on campus anymore? Behavior analysis. Yeah. Why do students in Poplarville, Mississippi, care about recycling now? behavior analysis uh, so uh, it's you know it's it's it, it's come through a lot of learning and then learning how to to just be okay with when nobody else agrees and just to know you know it's funny I had a study um, early in my career that I didn't think was all that profound and certainly some big names in our field didn't think it was all that profound but it, it was basically finding that the way a tangible condition in a functional analysis years ago was run had a confound in it that we delivered attention and the tangible simultaneously. And so we just found that if you just isolate the tangible, you remove the confound. And I, I took a lot of to my face criticism for that. I, it was, I was called a tinkerer. Why are you not, why are you tinkering with a methodology that really doesn't have any problems? Why are you doing these things? And so I just really thought, even though that study was published in Java, I was like, well, that's, that's really ridiculed. And then years later, shows how much I, I know the Cooper book, one of my students said, isn't this your graph from your study? And it was that very study in the Cooper book as an example. And, and to me, I was like, oh, you know, oh my gosh, I might not in the moment have any appreciation for what a genuine skeptical, well-trained behavior analysts can bring to our field. And you may never see that evidence, but if you stay true to those values, to what we all aspire to be and block out all the noise, then uh, you might be surprised. And I, I'm just thankful that I'm now coming almost like full circle to where I can really appreciate how those rough spots early in my career. And that's our field. You know, Skinner's not been dead a hundred years, you know. So from a history, from a history of science perspective, we're still like a baby. Mm -hmm. And in our profession, you know, what makes something like a legitimate standalone profession legally is a license, and that's in Mississippi. That's only existed four years. Yeah. So we still have some figuring out to do. And when it's, again, just as a baby learns to walk. It's not pretty. I've helped three human beings learn how to walk in my home. It's never, you fall, you get hurt, and you get up and you try again. And so that's kind of what I've tried to do. I'm, I don't know that I'm good at anything in behavior analysis other than getting getting up again. Yeah. <laughs> so.
that future. If you're into this, this channel is purely ran by patrons. Follow this link. And if you can, support. Let's build this community and this message and show the world what behavior analysis can do. Y'all please hold the applause to the end of the ceremony.